Hello, this is Avada Vagarber, and today we are looking at the Streamlight Dually 3AA. This is what's called an intrinsically safe flashlight. So, it's got a lot of interesting features, and, well, to explain intrinsically safe, I had to do a little bit of research on its specifications. So, yeah, there's a lot involved in this. So, what is an intrinsically safe flashlight? So, intrinsically safe means it's a product to be used in hazardous conditions or explosive areas. All right? So, um, so it's got a, it comes with a whole bunch of specifications. Uh, the Streamlight Dually uh, 3AA and the Dually 3AA laser, which is not this one, is the intrinsically safe flashlight for use in hazardous locations, class 1. Division 1 groups A, B, C, and D, Class 2, Division 1 groups E, F, and G, Class 3, uh, which is, that's it, there's no divisions in there, uh, Class 1, Zone 0, Group 2C, Temperature Code T4, and Exia. Uh, use only three 1.5 size AA Energizer E91s, Rayovac number 815s, or Duracell MN1500 Alkaline or Energizer EA91 or L91 lithium batteries. Um, risk of ignition, uh, do not open in a hazardous area. Substitution of a component may impair its suitability for Class 1 Division 1. Replace batteries in an area known to be non-hazardous. Read instructions before use. So, they're all, the reason why they're recommending only those batteries is those are the only ones classified in their testing. Um, so, uh, where do we go with this? This is a 140 lumen spotlight. That way. You could just tap it with a top light or leave it on. And there's a bottom one, which is also 140 lumen, but it's a floodlight. So it's kind of square shaped. If you have both on at the same time, uh, it's approximately 245 lumens is what it's rated at. And it's pretty accurate for anything else I have that's near that range. So, the cool thing about this is it's got three AA batteries inside. It comes with three AA batteries uh, in the package. Um, if you run just the spotlight, it'll last for 18 hours. If you run just the bottom light, it'll run for 18 hours. If you use both at the same time, it'll last nine hours. Which is, well, makes sense, because that would be half, right? So you run double the amount, you get half the time out of it. The standard spotlight has a range of 171 meters, and the side light or flood light is 18 meters. Uh, it's good for about a one meter drop in water, um, one meter depth in water, um, and a two meter drop test, so pretty good on that. It comes with this little clip on the back which works really well. You can see the nice large opening there for a belt or a pocket. You can put this in the pocket of your shirt, hit the button in the front and illuminate what's going on in front of you. Um, but it is a specialty flashlight. It's not for people that are looking for something tactical. Even though it's got these little ridges on the front, it's not a tactical flashlight. It's an all polycarbonate case, so it'll take a beating without breaking. Um, and the reason for the plastic case is to prevent sparks in places that are hazardous. Um, and I'm going to go over that shortly, um, having to go back through all of this. So all those class and divisions and groups, well, I did a deep dive research on what all of that meant. So. I wrote it down, and I'm going to go through it with you, because I think you should know. So there's a couple of complaints on Amazon for this light that they would have preferred a metal case light, but a metal case light is not intrinsically safe, because metal conducts electricity, so that would be a problem. So if this was in your hand, and you got something near close enough that was energized, and a spark jumped, depending on the environment you were in, you could have been toast. Literally, if something exploded, 
that would have been bad. That's why it's a inert plastic case. All right. So let's go over this here, shall we? So is that class one, division one, group A, B, C, and D? All that good stuff, right? So I'm not fancy. I don't edit this stuff on the screen because I don't know how. Intrinsically safe products for use in hazardous or explosive areas. USA and Canada. So the first three groups and the division are US and Canada. So they're rated for the US. This is how they do it. Class one is flammable gases, vapors, and liquids. Group A is uh, acetylene, group B is hydrogen, group C is ethylene, and group D is methane. And for each of those groups, an equivalent gas group. So whatever else is in the acetylene, the hydrogens, the ethylenes, anything that has those products in it could be a flammable gas, vapor, or liquid. Class 2, combustible dust. Group E, conductive dust. So types of sand or types of uh, gritty material that conduct electricity. Um, so that could be a lot of things. Um, grain is one of them, but grain's also on here. Group F, combustible carbon dust. And group G, grain dust. Because a lot of people don't realize that grain silos are just an explosion waiting to happen. They have things to help mitigate the dust in them. But the dust in the silos get ele uh, electrically charged. You just need an outlet or a ground and poof, one of those things explode. That's why they're all in the shape of rockets. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, Class three, ignitable fibers. What's an ignitable fiber? Carbon fiber is an ignitable fiber. Carbon fiber conducts electricity. I can't tell you the amount of people that want uh, carbon fiber battery boxes. I try to talk them out of it. No, 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 I want a carbon fiber battery box. And then it sets their vehicle on fire because carbon fiber conducts electricity. Now, division one, an environment where ignitable gases, vapors, or liquids can exist all the time under normal operating conditions. So there is a Division 2, which is um, an environment where ignitable gases does not exist normally. So this is for use where hazards are normal. Right? Now, temperature T4. The temperature T4 code regards to temperatures will not exceed 135 degrees centigrade, or 275 degrees Fahrenheit. So what is that about? Well, the reason why this is low lumens, even though they're LEDs, is because a typical LED flashlight gets hot. It usually gets hot right around the ring, wherever the heat sink is on the inside. This is only rated to less than 135 degrees centigrade or 275 Fahrenheit. So this in itself should be low enough not to cause a fire. Um, I can tell you if you keep the, uh, your hand on the front of like the Brute 10, the V10, or the V15 for that matter, long enough, you'll burn your fingers. Most people will let go of it well before then. But out of curiosity, I tested it and it got really, really hot. This won't. So, unfortunately, it's not as bright as typical flashlights that you see everywhere, but it's made for special uses. So, there are some considerations involved. Now, on the bottom here, we have the United Kingdom and the European Union, Class 1, Zone 0. Ignitable concentrations of flammable gas vapors are present uh, continuously. So, it's rated for where flammable gases and vapors are present continuously. I know I literally just said the same thing, but I didn't say clear, I don't think. And there's one other term on the side here, and I ran out of room for it. The EXIA, Exequia. It's actually EX space I space, space A. Very high level protection. So this is also a European Union thing. If anything is listed as EXIA, it is a very high level of protection in a hazardous condition. So what kind of work do you need this kind of flashlight for? Well, what about if you're in the fire department, EMS, emergency services, FEMA, 
Um, what if you're working with gas tankers? Um, uh, mechanic in some cases, depends on what kind of mechanic, maybe aircraft mechanic, industrial, um, they also list uh, workplace and automotive. Again, depends on your workplace. Depends on what kind of automotive system you're working on. Um, when I work for a manufacturing plant, um, they didn't require um, in intrinsically safe flashlight, but that's because we were producing water, water bottles. Um, but if you were in a petroleum plant, uh, then you may want something like this. So you won't be able to ignite any fumes that are in the air around you. Same thing if you're working at a gas station or, well, any place that there's significant hazardous um, vapors or chemicals nearby. So let's take a look on the inside of this so you can see what's going on. This top button controls the front lens, polycarbonate lens. There's a whole bunch of writing on the side here, which is really hard to read. And it's pretty much the same thing that this is, right? Um, another one that's extremely hard to read. This is MH, MSHA, permissible flashlight. Uh, it's got some approval numbers on it, what kind of battery replacements, things of that nature. So, to get the batteries out, I'm going to take the front off. Now, you'll see carefully that there's these ridges around the edge here. And then there's this piece here. Well, they have models that require a locking mechanism. So they have a wrench to open and close this and a lock that goes around into that and it seals it as a extra precautionary seal. So we're going to unscrew this. The lens is part, you'll see on the inside, there's a rubber liner, rubber gasket. And I already got some debris in there, that's wonderful. I'll get that out later. Now the first time I had to take this out, it was a bit difficult, but it just pops right out. And it leaves the core empty, like this. Now, I don't know if you can see it. Um, there's that little pin in the back there sticking up. Let's see if I can get a better light up here. See, there's that pin in the back there. It orientates this piece. So, if I try to put it upside down, it won't go anywhere. If you flip it around, it'll drop right in. So, that'll help you with that. So, here's the three batteries it comes with. It comes with Energizer Max batteries. They're brand new. It takes three. You pop right in. The little plus sign on top is the front light. And then this little one that's down here is the floodlight. Hard to tell with you know all the other lights that's in the room. Okay, it's got its own part number on the inside here. Stream light 68756. And that is of this barrel mechanism, not the light itself. Um, because the number for the light itself is different. But that's all it is. It's it's got this little piece of foam in the back. Prevent you from slamming the end of it. Goes right in. Screw that on. On the top light, you don't have to completely turn on it, you can just tap it if you need to do signals for somebody. But that's about it. So this is an explosion proof, an explosion, explosion, wow, I can't speak today, proof hazardous use flashlight. These are the reasons why it's rated the way it is. These are actually all the ratings. Uh, UL does ratings like this. There's a whole bunch of companies that do uh, CE, EX, M, S, H, A, A, N, S, I, S, G, S, UL. There's a whole bunch of special certifications. Um, so your regular flashlight like a Barut that I've done prior or um, Nightcore, which is another great brand or even better, the County Com stuff. Um, none of those are intrinsically safe. It has to go through a significant process to get everything in here. I also like, even though the I wish this was written in black, make it a little bit more noticeable, and that this was some other color so you can read it. 
without a magnifying glass and a flashlight. Um, it's textured all over the place. It's got this little texture groove here and here. This is made to be used wearing gloves. So obviously you can do it without gloves, like this, but if you have gloves, the buttons are big enough and easy enough to press, they can get it. It's also left hand, right hand, it's just fine. You gotta be careful though, if you see this light sticking up and you decide to hit it with your thumb, you're gonna blind yourself. And they do tell you warnings not to look at the light. They also make one with a laser, I guess as to point things out. But uh, that is it. So this is your Streamlight Dually 3AA Intrinsically Safe Flashlight. Any questions or comments, leave them below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Um, I'm also going to leave this up here for a moment just in case anybody needs to stop it. I'm also going to, you know, to read it all, I'm probably going to write it all in the description anyway. It'll just take me a while because I'm a slow typer. And um, that's about it. So thank you for watching. Please like this if you like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And that's it. Thank you for watching and have a glorious day.